supposed to meet Darlene Durden at her new apartment. Not the one she wanted, but the one that accepted FEMA vouchers. I sat in a moving truck full of donated furniture on a sticky September Sunday in 2005, trying not to be frustrated with my new friend. But I busted my ass all week to make this happen, and I was tired, and she was late. Darlene's home used to be in Empire, Louisiana, which is 70 miles from New Orleans. She heard on the radio that Katrina was coming. So two full days before the levees broke, she hit the highway. Eight hours in a minivan with two kids, one dog, all the pictures and papers she could find, and enough clothes for a week. Her husband wouldn't come. He was gonna sit on the porch with his brother and drink beer and watch the storm. When he finally called to tell her she hid that he was okay, she was so mad she wouldn't even, she refused to tell him where she was for three days. She was at the Quality Inn in Dallas where a hotel owner had offered a disaster discount. He inadvertently became the dry land upon which 300 evacuees washed ashore. His hotel wasn't just full, it was overflowing. Long lines for the computer in the business center. Pets in the hallway. Bored kids playing on the elevators. And that's where I met Darlene. While interviewing her to see if she qualified for free housing in Dallas. I claimed a small table near the glass containers of Captain Crunch and Raisin Bran left over from the complimentary breakfast buffet. I don't know how long Darlene had been in that line that snaked all the way around the dining room before my station opened up. I called out next and waved her over. She sat quickly, grateful for the seat. And as we worked through the housing questionnaire, I made a list of the referrals I thought she might need. The evacuee services were just beginning to take shape at that point. The Family Links Registry had just started that day. She told me her family knew exactly where she was. I said, you were smart to leave when you did. You don't have to tell me twice, she said. They say to go, I'm gonna go. It seems obvious, doesn't it? But I wonder if I would have evacuated early enough. I was glued to CNN. What I saw just confirmed my biases. I've always hated the bureaucratic incompetence of large scale good intentions. On principle, I used to refuse to give money to relief organizations with too much overhead and not enough focus. Everybody underestimated everything about Katrina. I mean, how hard can it be to fill a need so obvious? But what we were doing was different. An attorney friend of mine had called. He would convinced a client of his who owned apartment complexes to offer his unleased units to Katrina evacuees and accept FEMA vouchers as the full rent. My job was to interview people to see who might qualify for a free uh, apartment. It's an obvious win-win, right? The apartment guy needs renters, the Katrina evacuees need a place to stay, FEMA pays the bill, this I thought, this I can do. But I underestimated the impact that 24-7 Katrina news footage had on me. I was face to face with an actual evacuee, but my head was filled with images of rooftop rescues, jammed highways, looted grocery stores. I kept saying, I can't imagine the despair, but you know, that's not true. I actually spent way too much time imagining it. So I had tears in my throat as I told Darlene how sorry I was about all those people of elderly, the single moms that couldn't get out, couldn't get their kids out. Couldn't get out? She cocked her head. Have you seen the nails on those girls? They got their nails done that day. And then one finger in my face, she draws a slow circle in the air, her chin leading the whole way. If you can get your nails done, I think you can get your baby out of a hurricane. <laughs> glanced around, but she didn't care who heard. She was just getting started. If you can keep count of how many times the radio man interrupt your Kanye song to tell you to go, I think you could get your baby out of a hurricane. <laughs> if you got time to buy beer and sit on the porch with your dumbass brother, I think you can get your baby out of a hurricane. <laughs> Don't you tell me you can't get your baby out of a hurricane she pursed her lips and held my gaze. Oh my God, we burst out laughing. <laughs> you, Darlene, are gonna be okay, I said, immediately ashamed of how much I thought I knew because I watched the news. 
I mean, looking back, I see that Darlene was making a distinction that had escaped many fine investigative journalists. Empire, Louisiana is a long way from New Orleans' Ninth Ward, about as far away as Granbury from Harry Hines Boulevard. Still, I didn't really get it. And it was just starting to sink in after a half an hour in the back of that moving truck at her new apartment. I could already tell this was not her kind of place. I counted three cracked windows and zero open drapes. I didn't see any adults watching the kids that ran through the complex like wild dogs, nipping at each other without companionship. Darlene's kids called me ma'am. Her nine-year-old son liked to read, and she kept nagging him to go outside and play more. Her five-year-old daughter, as you can imagine, never met a stranger. For the first time, I realized that's only true for kids that grow up safe. So there I was, sweaty and frustrated with my hair askew and a bandana. Darlene showed up with her makeup on, her hair curled, wearing a purple skirt and some gold lame high heels. <laughs> it was the first time I'd seen her dressed up. And when the furniture was unloaded, she stood tall between a worn out leather sofa and a brand new mattress that I had convinced some outlet store to donate. And she hugged me and said with the utmost grace and affection, you didn't need to do all this. And I said, you know, I think maybe I did. Finally glimpsing my own reflection in the flood of incompetence I'd been watching on TV. See, I underestimated everything about what Darlene needed to make a fresh start. It's not obvious. Uh, and you don't have to be a bureaucrat to be ineffective. You can do that one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> uh, all it takes is for you to have a real good idea of what's the, what would be best for someone else. Like a moving van full of furniture or an apartment in Dallas. She humored me, but the whole time, Darlene knew what she needed. She needed to go home. What she needed from me was to serve as a witness to her fight, to show her she had somebody in her court. Now, Darlene's a strong woman. I didn't see her cry once the whole time, the whole month she was in Dallas. But I cried when she drove back to Louisiana to stay with her sister. I mean, I was happy she could use my old TV, but in a week or so, she called to tell me to go ahead and donate the rest of that furniture because she didn't have a place to put it. And that's when she cried. She finally got the nerve to go to where her house should have been. All she saw was a mound of slick gray mud. Not only had her mobile home disappeared off the face of the earth, she didn't even have any grass left in her yard. And we've talked every few months since then. She called me when she moved into a FEMA trailer, when her, school, when her kids' school opened again, when she enrolled in free job skills training, when her neighbor stole that propane tank off her FEMA trailer. <laughs> And we laughed hard when that FEMA trailer got mold because she wore some poor civil servant out until she got a bigger, newer trailer. <laughs> and she moved that trailer to the land where her house used to be. She called soon to tell me she qualified for a new home to be built by a Methodist charity, a kind of a habitat deal where you work on your own house with the volunteers. It's been six years since Katrina, but Darlene's made her fresh start. See, she don't want me all up in her business. She doesn't need me to tell her what to do. She just wants to know that when she calls, I'm gonna answer. And no matter what I'm doing, I'm gonna set aside the 45 minutes it's gonna take <laughs> for her to tell me whatever it is she needs to tell me. If she needs help, she'll ask. And every once in a while, I'll still hear something on the news about Katrina victims. Victims? Don't you tell me about victims. I know Darlene Durden, and she'll tell you. You can get your baby out of a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs>